Hey guys, so as promised, I'm bringing you a, a special interview. I said I'm going to be bringing you interviews throughout this particular CSIT20 challenge. And at any point, you guys are going to see an, uh, an advertisement on our social media saying who we're going to be interviewing. I'll be I'm talking to quite a few players. I'm going to try my best because, you know, as you know, the World Cup's on. Uh, so there's a lot to talk about today. Uh, I'm obviously going to talk to Grant about his particular performances and his form currently has been... <laughs> insane i mean he was one of the players that i picked as one of the players to watch for this particular tournament i'm so happy that he's <laughs> that he's been performing and, and hasn't put me in, in a bad uh space in the media by saying by not performing as the way i thought he's going to perform but a good performances so far welcome to the show grant it's great to see you we're going to be doing a little bit of a, of a q a session with you today I'm, I'm going to be asking you a couple of questions if the fans have any questions to ask, they can drop it in the live chat. Let's see how many we do get. It is a later than normal show. So let's hope that the guys come and join us. But welcome to the show, Grant. How are you feeling, first of all? First, coming straight from a match and now coming to chat to us here. <laughs> yeah, uh, straight in. Um, but yeah, feeling good, thanks. A little bit tired after our back to back games. But um, yeah, thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, that's something I need to speak to you about first and foremost. Um, how are you guys managing these back-to-back -back games? I mean, that's the first first challenge that you probably would have looked at when you looked at the fixtures. So um, how's the team feeling and, and what are the methods from the coaches to get you guys ready for back-to-back -back games? Because, I mean, geez, I mean, I think some of us will struggle to even play a, a, a four-hour game right now. Us, uh, normal people, but I mean, <laughs> you guys are trained for this. But back-to-back -back games for anybody, tough. Um. How are you guys working on getting through that? Um, just recovery sessions. Uh, we've had a couple of pool sessions, a um, couple of stretching sessions. You know, the, the sort of normal um, recovery methods, um, plenty of fluids, good food, and obviously rest. I mean, I don't know what the recovery sessions are like and what sort of things you do in recovery sessions. So can you give us some insight maybe into, into those type of things that you do to, to recover from a match when you've played and then have to go and go play again the next day? Um, like I said, just a couple of uh, stretching sessions. A um, couple of guys have sort of been in and out of the physio room um, with a couple of good rub downs and massages. <clears throat> um, and then activation. Um, a lot of sort of theraband work and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Obviously, a lot of the hard work has been done in the off season um, physically. So, you know, you would like to think you kind of when you hit the season. Also, we're pretty early on in the season, so um, yeah. most of the guys are still fresh and fit. Yeah. Yeah, because no. Normally you'll have net sessions before to be able to practice for a match and all of those type of things. So I'm assuming that that's not happening, of course, because, I mean, <laughs> the preparation would have happened before this tournament. Um, yeah, uh, there are there are nets available and um, obviously ways to top up on skills and whatnot um, during, the, during the competition. Um, I think most guys will, like I say, sort of top up um, probably not going to find yourself in an intense yeah. net session during a competition like this. Um, but sort of topping up, making sure the guys are staying in a good sort of mental space is probably more important. Okay, cool. Now I want to go into 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 your career, of course. And, and obviously last season, uh, you were in great form last season too, but you had a couple of injuries towards the end of the season that, that really hassled you. And a lot of us as fans over here were talking about that it's a pity that you're injured because there there were so many opportunities possibly for you to maybe get an opportunity to play SAA or play for, for even some people would put your name in for the priorities even um, on this particular channel. So um, can you talk us through that difficult period and how you managed to get through that and then come out so strongly, three back-to-back -back half centuries, almost a fourth one today. Um, can you talk us through that process mentally as well as physically? Um, yeah, I think it's probably probably credit to um, to our management um, who obviously I've uh, kept quite close with even while not playing um, yeah those obviously those uh, situations are never easy as an athlete but 
it's stuff that everyone goes through. Everyone gets injured at some stage. So you're gonna miss you're gonna miss fixtures um, at some stage. Um, luckily for me, I had a really good off season um, over in the UK. Um, so that kind of uh, gave me some more game time. Um, obviously, I was a little bit low on on game time last season. So having the luxury of being able to go overseas and play a full season there. Um, you kind of don't lose too much rhythm in your game. Um, and yeah, I've just been able to sort of come into the season um, hitting the ball quite nicely and, and like I say, having that sort of rhythm in my game. What, I, what I've noticed as well is that in your, but your batting particularly is your ability in the power play to be able to obviously um, adjust your game according to what the situation of course is but to also keep the pressure on the opposition is very important as an opener um you spoke about your off season and your time in england and do you feel that you've that your game has changed in t20 cricket over the last year or so and how much do you would you would you say england had to do with that your time in england would have to do with improving your game has it at all um definitely um i think also i played so much cricket while I was there. So, I mean, any batter will tell you the more you play, the the more you sort of learn the, and the better you're going to get. Um, so I think that was probably a big thing to do with it. Um, obviously, I only played one day cricket that side. So, well, I played a couple of four-day games, but the majority of my cricket that side was one day cricket. So it gave me an opportunity to learn a little bit more about myself. Um, like I said, um, Try, always trying to sort of get better, um, you know, with my batting and my keeping as well. Um, always trying to improve and in, improve on that strike rate. Um, obviously, it's a big talking point in world cricket at the moment. So, um, and I feel like if you're going to make the step into uh, into international cricket and um, all that, then um, you know you need to be striking the ball. So. Mm -hmm. That uh, was probably a big thing for me going across, um, just trying to sort of learn ways to that would suit my game, um, you know, trying to hold on to sort of my best cricket shots. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, like you say, that is a major talking point. It was a major talking point in the World Cup as well. We are seeing a lot of teams struggle in the power play, losing wickets. I've seen it now as well in the CSA T20 Challenge. I mean, Poch has been... From my from my um, observations of the past tournaments that have been there before, it seems like the, the wickets are quite different to what is normally at Potcher. You're getting a lot more balls that are getting stuck into the turf. It's harder to get runs out of the to hit uh, outside over the ring in the power play. So uh, a lot of teams are actually struggling in the power play. Apart from like the Titans and maybe you guys as well um, that have done very really well, and uh, you could say towards as well the Rocks as well has done really well consecutively in power plays but what what is key for you as a, as a cricketer um because there's a narrative about you know you have to be a big hitter these days but how you play and you playing great cricket shots and and still finding the boundary and still finding ways to score um even though you may be not looking to hit massive sixes every single ball so can you give me some insight into your style of cricket and how you've managed to to an extent master um, that power play and, and and being positive in those power plays. Um, I think I've always had the luxury of being a good timer of the ball, um, and you know, just being a sort of a natural uh, stroke maker. Um, I've, I'm definitely not, definitely not a hacker. I'm probably not a guy that's going to walk out and um, you know smoke the ball out of the stadium. <clears throat> um, um, I've just never been that that sort of guy. I've always prided myself on trying to hit good cricket shots um, or maybe a more orthodox cricket shots. Um, and then just play the situation and the field that's kind of presented to me. Um, you know, I feel like that's probably leveled, uh, leveled my game up a little bit is the ability to play, maybe be able to play the field um, and then sort of understand what my options are to certain bowlers. Um, try not be too one-dimensional. Um, and then, yeah, like I say, coupled with good timing and a, a good strong base, good strong foundation, 
um, is how I like to bat. And probably better or from maybe more successful for me. Mm -hmm. Because I kind of noticed that I don't I don't know if I'm giving your secrets away here, but I've kind of noticed while watching you you bat that uh, it's almost like almost like a, a bowler that you kind of target within within a power play or within an innings that you 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 maybe take a risk and say okay we're gonna go after him. How do you manage to pick those? Like in your mind, is it just based on situation or, or what you're experiencing on the game on the day? A uh, bit of both. Um, I think you kind of uh, get a, a bit of a sense uh, when you're batting. Um, any batter will probably tell you that. Oh, <laughs> so, sorry about that. We had lunch. Here. <laughs> so me too. Really... Me too. <laughs> Um, I think any batter will kind of uh, tell you that they kind of get a sixth sense, um, you know, that they sort of fancy someone or um, the way somebody bowls probably plays more into your strengths. Um, we talk a lot about matchups, um, you know, nowadays uh, cricket's all about matchups, um, you know, and then obviously playing your conditions, uh, like I say, short boundary, long boundary, those sort of things, obviously uh sort of play a part um playing yeah playing your conditions the situation and then trying to couple it all together and just think okay well maybe this is the guy that we can target yeah because it sounds like it's almost natural to you that you play the smart brand of cricket that we're speaking about um south africa's been speaking about it for a long time and i watch you bat um i've spoken a lot about top order batters that need to play meaningful singles i call it or purposeful singles i would say because a lot of the times you see batters in the in the power play they or within an innings they kind of force a single or it's a mistake they try to go for a big shot and the ball just skews to the field and they take a quick single with you i've noticed that your singles are almost measured so yes sometimes you'll have a couple of shots that maybe skew and it goes for for a single but most of the time you are actually meaning to hit that single and rotate the strike and i watched kp today with you and the way you kind of manage that partnership you've been the informed batter you noticed picked out that he was hitting the ball quite smoothly and you maybe weren't timing it as well as you were previously and you rotated the strike so can you give me some thoughts into that maybe some tips to youngsters that can learn how to do that and have control over that because that's probably the hardest part that that, that batters are trying to to, to learn now yeah, I mean, I think you said it is, um, uh, obviously, I wasn't striking the ball as well as KP, so um, I think it was kind of just trying to feed him as much as much strike. Um, also, it doesn't disrupt his rhythm as a batter, you know, you, uh, all batters will know once you sort of get on a roll and you're hitting the ball nicely, you want to keep facing, you know, you want to keep facing balls. Um, so I think my job was probably a little bit more different today. Um, probably trying to feed him the strike and you know let him keep on keep on hitting boundaries the way he did um, and you, like like you said obviously just trying to turn those good balls um, into a single trying to find a way to make sure that every ball you keep scoring obviously minimize those tough balls um, and then stay positive enough that when you do get a ball sort of in your in your zone that suits your game that you try and stay ruthless and, and still put that ball away yeah and and playing the the uh, the swing deliveries that's been a problem around the world we've seen this now in 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 australia in in certain conditions the ball's also swinging and it's giving a lot of problems to a lot of the top order batters it's probably the the number i would say currently it's probably the number one um Thing, skill that players need to learn in the, in, the, in the top order, especially top three batters, to face that swinging delivery. So can you give some tips maybe to youngsters on how to face that specifically? Because, I mean, we kind of always find ourselves, like I see sometimes chopping happening or no foot movement. Is is, is that foot movement important or, or what are the tips that you could give on, on playing swing? Definitely. Um, well, I mean, I'm still trying to take tips myself, to be honest. So... Um, but definitely, I think, uh, I mean, T20 cricket, a lot of uh, batters who bat up the order in T20 cricket will know that obviously it's quite difficult when the ball shapes because you're trying to be explosive, but the ball is still moving. Um, so the way I see it is just to try and hold on to strong cricket shots, 
um, you know, sort of try and maybe offset the bowler, sort of try and step into his channel or, you know, make a step down the wicket or whatever it is, maybe try and put him off. Um, maybe he makes a change in length or in line, um, sort of stuff like that. That's normally my, my sort of go-to, but just trying to hold on to those strong cricket shots is important. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's awesome. Um, okay, let's get to some of the questions that we do have here. We have Dex that has been waiting for a long time for you to come on. Hey, Grant, who was your idol growing up? And who's your favorite player in the current Proteus roster? Um, idol growing up probably wasn't a cricketer. Um, uh, my dad was probably my idol growing up. Obviously, he was a golfer, so probably looked at him a lot. Um, his sort of training regimes and stuff like that. Growing up, he was a hard worker, just a hard working person. Um, so I would say he was probably, probably my idol growing up. Um, current pro tiers, um, I'm a fan of all of them, to be honest. <laughs> I just think we've got a really good side at the moment. So um, I love the way Riley approaches his batting um, as a, as a top order batter. Um, the way he hits the ball so sweetly. Obviously, we've seen it for so many years. He's such an experienced bloke. Um, and then I'm probably going to go for a fan favorite in David Miller. Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay, the next one is about the SA20. First and foremost, I want to know how you feel about the SA20 and how excited you are for that. Um, this is obviously a perfect tournament to actually get you guys prepped for that as well. But are you excited to play with uh, Livingston? Definitely. Um, he's not the only one. Um, I think uh, guys like that, uh, obviously, he's played in so many T20 comps around the world now um, and a very experienced T20 player. So um, I'm looking forward to sort of uh, rubbing shoulders with him, probably learn a lot from him, um, you know, and then uh, just sort of watch him go about his business. I think that'll be really cool. Um, and hopefully get a get a few opportunities to back up in with the lovely. <laughs> yeah. Um, where were you when that when that whole auction happened and when the announcement happened and you knew that you were getting a, a side, of course? Or what was that experience like? Um, very exciting. Um, obviously, it's such an exciting competition for cricketers in our country. Um, I think I'm probably not the only one if I say this or when I say this that, um, you know, a uh, lot of domestic guys have been crying out for opportunities like this. Um, and a lot of domestic guys, uh, you know, deserve opportunities like this, like this competition is going to bring. Um, so I think that's, that's really awesome. And I'm sure everyone was excited when their name got read out, um, you know, and, and somebody put up a paddle for them um you know that in itself is uh, obviously very exciting just to know you're going to be a part of it <clears throat> um and i was much of the same i was sitting at home and um my name came up a couple of times so <laughs> it was a little bit of emotional damage <laughs> along the way <laughs> um but finally got picked up by a team and uh, that was really awesome yeah Okay, um, we've got a more of a message than a question. Hello, Grant. Congratulations for being the leading run scorers in this tournament. Score as much as with good strike rate as possible. You will get a national corner up sooner or later. The maiden protest call up isn't far away, says Dex. I mean, says another washout tomorrow against South Africa in Bangladesh. Let's talk a little bit about the Bangladesh match. Let's talk about another uh, more rain happening again. But if we get to see some um, cricket happen, Let's talk a little bit about selection. I've heard that the Sydney wicket is a little bit more friendly to, to spin. I don't know what you've heard about the, the, the wicket itself as well. Um, would you go with the two spinners against against Bangladesh? Um, I mean, yes, I would love to try and, you know, if I was a, a coach or selector, um, I think, you know, Shamo would probably play in any of my sides just because he is who he is. Um, obviously very difficult in the conditions over in Australia. Um, and I just feel like that bowling attack 
that the proteas have at the moment. Um, I mean, you have a guy like Marco Janssen who's, uh, who's sitting on the side or, as it is. Um, probably quite a congested bowling attack. Um, I would love to see him get into the side. Like I say, it just brings so much X factor to the team. Um, and he's obviously been, uh, you know, such a high wicket taker for, uh, for the proteas over a number, number of seasons now, a number of years. So I would love to see him in. Um, he also brings just a little bit extra to the to the Proteus side. But uh, like I said, obviously conditions dependent, um, and I'm mm. sure he understands. Yeah. Um, when you look to take on a spinner, do you look to hit them in the V or more to cow corner area? Uh, definitely in the V. Um, <laughs> I think I've hit quite a number of uh, boundaries this comp sort of straight over the bowler's head. Um, it's quite a strong zone for me, uh, quite a high uh, scoring zone for me, um, particularly against spin. Um, so that would be my go-to. Um, like I say, yeah, it's probably a bit of a strength of mine. So. Mm -hmm. um, with regards to the coach, has, has there been like conversations with you guys on the style of cricket that you guys want to play. I've heard from certain players that certain coaches like to just tell them to, to bat with freedom and to play with freedom. Has there been specific like a style that, that the coach has spoken to you about or is it more of a um, focus on your individual game and the rest will come together? A um, bit of both. Obviously, uh, coaching is a difficult job. So you have to sort of man manage and then um, you know, sort of have your eye on the team as well. Um, it's a difficult job, <laughs> probably not a job for me. Um, but yeah, a bit of both. Uh, obviously, each player is going to be a little bit different. Um, but at the end of the day, we we want to play a bold, a bold black, uh, brand of cricket. You know, um, like I say, we want to go and hold on to our strongest cricket shots, but still be positive and uh, proactive and sort of take the game to the opposition. Um, you know, it's just the way that the modern game is now and it's the way the game is moving. Um, and, uh, you know, if we want to be a successful team and is, if we want to be successful as individuals as well, we, we're probably going to have to try and move with the world and play that bold sort of brand of cricket. Um, do you see yourself as a future captain, asked Justin? Uh, definitely. Um, I would love to love to uh, lead a side, whether it be the Dolphins or a national team one day. Um, I think it's a great honor to lead a team. Um, and yeah, if I ever got that opportunity, I would grab it with both hands. Your favorite workout to eat in the gym? <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. I uh, don't think cricket watchers are going to like this, but uh, I enjoy doing a few bicycles, to be honest. <laughs> they say guns means runs. So. <laughs> you and uh, Peter Malana, they've got joined each other. <laughs> <laughs> He'll love that one. <laughs> so um, there's one more question that I would like to ask you, and it's about um, first class cricket. And about the youngsters, because a lot of the youngsters coming through are becoming more T20 type of specialists. They're coming out with this with this attacking brand of cricket and no fear type of brand of cricket. And I, f I fear that some of them are lacking a little bit of patience. Um, and I've spoken to some cricketers about it, and they've, have, they've mentioned the fact that first-class cricket has helped their T20 game. Do you feel that that is the case with you, or do you feel that can be the case for, for youngsters? How can first-class cricket help their T20 game? Um, yeah, I think um, first class cricket or four day cricket has um, probably probably taught me the most about cricket, uh, just in terms of my foundations, um, you know, uh, preparing for games. Um, that's a very big one in four day cricket, obviously. Um, and just sort of trying to learn the sort of ebbs and flows of cricket, whether it be in the game or in a season in your individual performances, it's obviously the, the pinnacle and for me, probably the most difficult format. So um, I feel like that's probably where you learn the most. Um, 
and that's probably for all ages to be honest i uh, mm -hmm. wouldn't just classify that as for the youngsters um it's definitely helped my cricket it's definitely you know given me like i say a strong base and strong foundation for my for my cricket that's brilliant okay cool um two more questions over here we've got were you thinking of the 100 in the last t20 match at all <laughs> To be honest, I wasn't, and um, <laughs> kind of look look back, and you kind of go, "Oh, I wish I could have sliced that one past point." And um, you know, in hindsight, you think, "Oh, it would have been awesome to get a hundred." Um, but in the moment, I was I was kind of just thinking, "If he misses, I'm 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 going over again." So that was my thought yeah because i mean I... to cover because <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to ask that question actually because i mean i heard like for example okay this is obviously in test cricket and four day cricket but i heard uh, a talk with Ashel prince um and i can't remember who else was on the panel but Ashel specifically said he says when he's looking to score big um he normally tries to think past 100 so he doesn't look at a 100 milestone he'll look at 110 120 130 and aim for that so that that will be his focus and it will take his, his focus away from that actual 100 milestone and actually when you look back you actually passed it um is that the sort of technique that 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 you've been told or thought about before or seen before um to be honest i just try and stay in the moment as much as possible i know it's a cliche but i really do try I try not think too much ahead or um think too many balls ahead uh, just try and play the ball as it comes and uh, play the situation as it stands Mm -hmm. And that um, goes into perfectly into the final question. Grant, how important for players to, to be mentally tough? Who do you do? Uh, what um, what do you do for mentally um, for the mental aspect? And what do you learn from a player like Virat Kohli, for example? Oh, uh, I mean, I don't think the learning ever stops from Virat Kohli. Um, he's just generational. So. Um, yeah mentally tough is uh get this question a lot and my feeling on mentally tough is everyone is kind of mentally tough in their own way um i don't think there's really a sort of direct classification for mentally tough um you obviously get more sort of you know bold people um and you get more sort of reserved people so mentally tough comes in many different forms um for me to be mentally strong uh, i believe in my preparation um you know going into games just <clears throat> um sort of replaying the game over and over so that i can sort of walk out and be confident that there's nothing i haven't um that I'm, nothing i'm not ready for or nothing i haven't prepared or or seen um you know so i can just be confident in my own sort of ability and uh, just you know play and enjoy the game Grant, thanks a lot for coming on. I'm going to give you time to rest now. I'm, I'm not going to make this as long as we normally have it. Uh, thanks a lot. For, thanks a lot for coming on the show and chatting to me. I'll probably um, catch up with you again after the tournament to see how you're doing. Um, but thanks a lot for giving your time. I know it's tough when you're coming from games, etc. So thanks a lot um, for coming and joining the show. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Cool, man. And so to all the fans out there, thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Please don't forget to download the latest issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine monthly. The latest issue, of course, is on the screen right now. Um, it's Kahiso Rabada, of course, that you need to obviously download it as, as fast as possible. Um, go ahead. It's 100% free straight to your inbox every month. For some reason, it's not popping up on the screen. There we go. Um, so download it right now. It's 100% free straight to your inbox every Back issue as well is 100% free straight to your inbox every month. Also, if you want to help grow and promote South African cricket, become a patron today. That's how you keep us afloat, guys. So go ahead and click on this link on the screen or in the description. Go to clickfanaticsmag.com for all your regular updates. Grant, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks to all the fans that have tuned in as well. And I'll see you guys all very, very soon. Take care. Peace. And we'll see you again tomorrow for reviews directly after the game, guys. Don't wait for me at 7 o'clock. Directly after the game is done, we'll be going live for a review show. So please join us for the review after the match between South Africa and Bangladesh, if there's a match and no rain. Thanks a lot. Good luck for the tournament uh, as well, Grant. Thanks for joining us. And I'll see you guys all very soon. Peace out. Thank you.